I run to for protection. I need it. He is my shield. By his power I am saved. He is my hiding place. High in the hills. I call to the Lord for him. And he saved me from my enemies. He is worthy of my praise. Death had his ropes wrapped around me. A deadly flood was carrying me away. The ropes of the grave wrapped around me. Death set its trap right there in front of me. In my trouble, I called for the Lord. Yes, I cried out to my God for help. There is his temple. He heard my voice. He heard my cry for help. Let us pray. Lord, gracious God, our Father, we just say thank you. Because, Lord, as we kind of look back at all your words through, Lord, we can God kind of surely testify that we have a reason to give you thanks. We have a reason to give you praise. And we have a reason to give you our Lord. Because, God, you have to just continue to be faithful to us, Lord. Because, God, you have already, God, kept us half of the way throughout God, general, Lord. So I just say thank you. Thankful that, God, your eye is on a spell. And as long as your eye is on a spell, I know, God, that you watch over me. So I just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for God, strengthen me, Lord. But God, I am weak, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for God, fight my battles. And as long as you fight my battles, all I have to do is stand still and see salvation, Lord, my past. Thank you, Lord, for God, everything we have done for you, Lord. And everything we have continued to do. Because, God, when I look back at you, Lord, you, God, could have God took me, oh Lord, as God, I was God driving, oh Lord, in this bad weather. When I look back at him, Lord, you God could have took me, oh Lord, in my sleep, oh Lord. When I look back at him, Lord, you God could have took me, oh Lord, through wrong God races. When I look back at him, Lord, you God could have took me, oh Lord, through God always feet. When I look back at him, Lord, you God have could could have took me, oh Lord, through our COVID. But I'm still standing. So I just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for God. Be in there for me, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for God. Never leave me, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for never forsaking me, oh Lord. Because all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, oh Lord, you have been so good. So with every breath that I am able, oh Lord, I will, oh God, give you the glory. I will give you the honor that you wish for yourself. Because it's the same to your mother's songs. Great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised. And his greatness is our search for the Lord. You have been great to us, Lord, throughout God just this year. You have been good to us, Lord, throughout God 2023, Lord. You've been good to us, Lord, throughout our whole lives. So I just say thank you. And who is the Lord? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty and better. So God, I'll put my trust in I will have faith in you, oh Lord, because it says you're one of songs. And it, I mean, it says you're one of Isaiah, that those who have the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run upon wings as eagles. They shall run and not give them. And they shall walk and they know. So God, I give you all my problems. I give you all my situations. Because I know who that you are able to see in me. Abundantly above all things we can ask of me. So have your way in my life, Lord. Break every chain, Lord. Break every chain, Lord. We with you, Lord. Break every chain, Lord, in the government. Break every chain, Lord, in the United States. Break every chain, Lord, in God. God is real, Lord. Break every chain, Lord. Because God, we know, Lord, that God, the world cannot do it, Lord. But you can, Lord. Yes. Because God, we know that there is nothing to fall for you. So we just cast all of our cares upon you. Because Lord, we do care for us. And these are the best of those in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you are glad to be in the house of the Lord, why don't you tell them thank you? I said, if you are glad to be in the house of the Lord, tell them thank you. Because he did not have to let you be here. But he has kept you to be dangerous toward the spirits. He has kept you.
family and friends. We would like to welcome our guests and members to our service today. And we hope that you will worship with us again. Every Wednesday, our prayer service is at 6 p.m. and Bible study at 6.30 p.m. Pastor would like everyone to join us in person or on the call line. You may pray if you choose to or just listen. As we all know, there is power in prayer. Amen. You can view our Sunday worship service through our Facebook page, Metropolitan Baptist Church of Detroit, and our YouTube page at NBC Detroit. This wonderful, wonderful year for us, our 100th church anniversary this year. <laughs> We have our banquet tickets are ready, but they will be available next Sunday for sale. So please see Sister Holly Wendell next Sunday. We ask that everyone invite your family, friends, past church members, co-workers, everybody to attend this special occasion. Tickets are $50. We need every member to purchase and sell tickets. Let's make this a wonderful affair. Church anniversary assessment, $100. $200 is a cheerful giver. $500 is a thankful giver. $1,000 is a faithful giver. Last day for ads, for the anniversary booklet will be February 9th. If you have any questions or anything pertaining to that, you can see Sister Katie Jackson in the Sally Sattler room after the morning service. Thank you. Well, I know I love these and I know a lot of you do as well. Please help one of our young people, Alana Brown, she is selling Girl Scout cookies. You can sign up in the Sally Sally room after morning service. Coming events, Sunday, February 11th, Balance Time Day service. Our speaker will be Reverend Charles Willis. Amen. Amen. Sunday, February, February 18th, very important, our annual church meeting after morning service and Sunday, February 25th, Heritage Sunday celebration. That includes our announcements for today. Everyone have a happy Sunday and a blessed week. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Saints of God, God is good. And all the time, God is good. Yeah. And just the very fact that I see Sister Juanita Lofton yeah. walking in the sanctuary. has her being. Yeah. After all that she has been through, saints of God, that wasn't just a cute song that we saw, that there shall be glory after this. Because somebody in here knows that the God we serve and the God we worship can transition you from the place of pain that you are in to a place of peace and prosperity where you can see him high and lifted up. Because how many of you know that he has a name that is above every name? And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father because indeed you may have indeed suffered a hardship in your health but guess what you're still here in the Bible the word of God says that everything that have breath praise ye the Lord because God is sitting on the throne and he's taking care of his own and we have come today just to brag on Jesus because you oftentimes hear me say that even when the doctor sees something on the screen 
God is able to indeed dissolve that difficulty within seconds. And I called one of my members because I was going to indeed go and visit her this week. And indeed, Sister Lofton, I have a gift for you in the office of mine that is from one of the members. But indeed, as I was talking to this member, I just said, I just called you to have a word of prayer. And she said, Pastor, I'm bored out right now because the doctor saw something on the screen one day and they had me come back for more tests on another day, but indeed they didn't see what they thought that they had saw. And I'm literally bored out. And I told her, but well, you are in a good place to be this is bored out because the Bible says that those who wait upon the Lord shall their strip. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Somebody in here needs to shout out, God, I'm standing in the need of a fresh anointing from above. Amen. As we all make our way to the altar, if you're standing in the need of prayer, I'm going to ask that Deacon Doris Dixon leads us in prayer. But we're praying for Trustee Fred Charleston. Yes. We're praying for Sister Maddie Thompson. Yes. We're praying for Sister Wadia Lofton, but she's in the sanctuary today. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We're praying for the Cornish family, Ronald and Kathy Cornish. We're praying for our sister Irene Ritchie yes. in California. Yes. We're praying for Brother Karen McDonald, and we show that plan for one of our beloved members, Sister Holly Wyndham, because if she's not here, she must truly be under the weather. Amen. We're praying for Deacon Delanor Stonehall. We're praying for Lewis Black. Yeah. We're praying for Winfrey Black. Yes. We're praying for Sister Helen Parham. And we're praying for the mother of this church, indeed, Mother Petty. Amen. I was glad to get the praise report that she went and got her hair done this week yes, on yesterday, and she's been not feeling well. And I might have to sneak over to her house as she is shining for the Lord. Yes. But indeed, with your hands bowed and your eyes closed, focusing in on Jesus. All that he said and did. You ought not take anything for granted. Because it could be you outdoors. Yeah. With no shoes. Yeah. No clothes. No roof over your head. Yeah. But God has indeed supplied all of your needs. According to his riches and glory. Yeah. By Christ Jesus. So focus in on the favor of God and stop getting frustrated by the contrary winds that are coming your way. Yes. You begin to pray silently as Deacon Doris Dixon takes us to the throne of grace. Amen. Dear God and Heavenly Father, we come before you this day saying thank you, dear God. We realize that you have provided our every need. We thank you, dear God and Heavenly Father, that we have left homes that were warm and filled with electricity, food, and gas. Thank you, God, you have blessed us. Yes. And we are indeed so grateful. And by that token, dear God and Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are without. We pray for those who are living in the houses with others because they themselves don't have their own house. Trust me. We pray, dear God and Heavenly Father, for those who have insecurities when it comes to food and clothing, dear God. Many people are walking around during this extreme cold weather with the clothes that are not sufficient for the weather itself. And we ask you, dear God and Heavenly Father, to please bless those individuals so they may be warm and they be provided for all of their needs. We pray, dear God and Heavenly Father, for those that are in hospital beds and those who are at home today that are suffering from various infirmities, dear God, we ask that you will touch them and that you will bless them. Dear God, for we know that you and you alone have the power to make them whole. So we ask, dear God, Heavenly Father, that you will pour out your blessings upon them and heal their physical and their mental bodies, dear God. Touch their spirit so they know that you are indeed in control. We pray, dear God, as we move toward 
our celebration for our 100th anniversary. We pray, dear God, that you will make each of us more open to you. Dear God, we ask that you will bless us individually with more knowledge of you, that you will bless us with more patience, with more understanding, with more love for each and each other, dear God, our Heavenly Father. Make us and grow us as you would have us do as we fulfill your will, dear God. So please make us stronger, make us better in this 100th year. Dear God, we ask for all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you go to your seat, hug someone, encourage them in the Lord. Let them know that God is thinking about you. You
so grateful for that because not only does he know my name, I'm in a relationship with him yes. and I indeed know his name. Amen. I know his name as a wonderful counselor. Yes. I know his name as a mighty God. Yes. I know his name as a Prince of Peace yes. and I know his name as a indeed Heavenly Father. Yes. And I know that because I know his name, I don't have to toss and turn at night. But indeed, I can send him all of my trials, all of my tribulations, and I can indeed count it as all joy, knowing that the trying of my faith is producing patience and that God is at work in and through my life and that he will never put more on me than I can bear. And indeed, when I'm weak, he'll whisper into my spirit, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And let's thank God for our choir ushering us into the very presence of God. We thank God for what God is up to in the life of our choir because every Monday morning when I get to the campus, indeed, saints of God, I am indeed greeted by individuals who say that your choir show enough song All right. and indeed they were blessed by the story that justice posted and indeed it was in three parts harmony and we thank god for reverend willis and we thank god for Amen. our minister of music sister yes. Wendy penny and all that indeed the choir is doing 
Well, it's Victory Sunday, saints of God, because I discern in my spirit that we're going to kill a devil in Detroit today. And indeed, we're going to bury a buccaneer, saints of God. We pray victory and we pray that on next week that we will indeed be celebrating our particular city as we proceed forward because on any given Sunday, anything can happen. So you can't take your opponent for granted. But indeed, when you know God and the power of his resurrection, uh -huh. you can go ahead and write your enemy's obituary and yeah. say, rest in peace yeah. to the competition. Yeah. Because indeed, God is sitting on the throne and taking care of his own. Yeah. I ask that you open up your Bibles to the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. I want to preach a message today entitled, It Ain't Over. Indeed, I know that the bulletin says that Lord revive us again, but yeah. that is next week, saints of God. Some type of way the title got lost in translation. But the word that God wants to step into your spirit as we continue this series of sermons, Reggie, on all the places you'll go when you walk with God is that we discovered on the first Sunday that God took the prophet Elijah to the brook Kerith, indeed the cutting place. And at the cutting place, God did something very unusual because he allowed a raven, a greedy bird that's greedy for his own gratification, to indeed bless the prophet with food by day and by food by night. Right. And that's why you don't know where your next blessing is going to come from. Wow. And that is why when God opens up a new chapter in your life, you got to be steadfast, you got to be unmovable, and you got to always be abounding in the work and the will of God. Right. Because even though your circumstances may not be pleasant, God is trying to convince you that yes, he is real and yeah. that Lord, I can feel you deep in my soul. Yeah. And that's why you want to thank God for every hard time, for every trouble that comes your way because as the saints of old used to say way back in the day, if I never had a problem, uh -huh. I wouldn't know that God can solve yeah. and I wouldn't know what faith in God can do, Joe. Yeah. But through it all, yeah. I learned to trust in Jesus. And through it all, I learned to depend on God. Amen. First King chapter 17, commencing at the 8th verse, concluding at the 16th verse. The Old Testament evangelist records these following words. Reading from the easy to read version, it does not matter what translation that you have, as long as it says B-I-B-L-E, that is the book for me. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go to Zarephath in Sidon and stay there. There is a widow there that I commanded to take care of you. So Elijah went to Zarephath. He went to the town gate and saw a woman there gathering wood for a fire. She was a widow. Elijah said to her, would you bring me a small cup of water to drink? As she was going to fetch or get the water, Elijah said, bring me a piece of bread too, please. All right. The woman answered, she must have been an African-American fine sister. <laughs> I promise you, before the Lord your God, that I have nothing but a handful of flour in a jar and a little bit of olive oil in a jar. Mm. I came here to be quite honest with you, to gather a few pieces of wood for a fire to cook our last meal. Mm -hmm. My son and I will eat it and then die from hunger. Elijah said to the woman, don't worry, go home, cook your food, as you said, but first, 
Make a small piece of bread from the flour that you have and bring it to me. Then cook some for yourself and your sons. The Lord, the God of Israel, says that jar of flour will never be empty. And that jug will always have oil in it. This will continue until the day the Lord sends rain in the land. So the woman went home and did what Elijah told her to do. And Elijah, the woman, and her son had enough food for a long time. The jar of fire and the jug of oil were never empty. This happened just as the Lord said through his prophet Elijah. Yeah. As you go to your seat, why don't you indeed speak prophetically to your neighbor and just tell them three words. It ain't over. It ain't over. That's what God wants to step into your spirit right. today. No matter what your health situation is, no matter what your financial situation is, no matter what your home and family situation is, God says it ain't over. Hang that up on the line of your mind and let the Holy Ghost flow on it. It ain't over. My brothers and my sisters, upon investigating the 17th chapter of the book of 1 Kings and how the prophet Elijah Rotisa was indeed on the move for God. One can conclude that the God we serve and the God we worship not only sovereignly orders our steps, but he moreover and more importantly sovereignly schedules our stops as well. Because he wants us all in this sanctuary today to spiritually understand, as I told you a few weeks ago, and the last time that we were together, preaching from this particular preaching series, all oh, the places that you'll go, that God wants each and every one of you in the sanctuary today to know that you didn't make your way into the house of God by accident and fight your way through the ice and the cold weather. He wants you to know, Joe, that where God guides, he also provides for us in an immediate way. Amen. Yes, God wants you to know, church, that where God guides, he also turns and provides for you right there on the spot to spiritually show us all firsthand that if he is indeed, in fact, all that you say that he is, and that if he is in fact sovereignly sending you somewhere to uplift and to magnify his holy name on high, he will moreover support you there, he will moreover sustain you there, and he will moreover strengthen you there as well to prove to us going forward that the word of God is undoubtedly true, for he promised to supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And he promised as well in Psalm 84 in verse number 11 that no good thing will he ever withhold from those of us who walk upright. For beloved, whenever you choose to walk with the God of your salvation through the storm, through the rain, through the sickness, through the heartache, and through the pain, God's word will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. For I don't care how dark and dismal your situation and your dilemma is right now. God is more than able to deliver you from danger seen and unseen. Because yes. somebody in here knows that God does his best work when we are going through very experiences. Because the Bible, the word of God says that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before 
for me in the presence of my enemies. Amen. And that's why when I used to go to the gym at Planet Fitness, I lost 124 pounds in one year. Because indeed, I would get on the treadmill. And I would put the entire at 15. And I would indeed be holding on tightly to the bottom. Because indeed, it was difficult. And I was going up the mountain. But indeed, saints of God, you got to know that if God is ordering your steps, if he's taking you through a hard time, you ought to have a hallelujah, any path type of attitude and mindset about your system. Because God is the only one who can transition you from the place of pain that you are in to a place of peace and prosperity where you can see him both high and up. Therefore, God's word for somebody in this sanctuary today is you got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because life may be filled with swift transitions, but if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, is there anybody in here today? Day that knows that God will get you through whatever you are going through. Who would have ever thought that a 90-year-old woman who had a stroke at the end of the year would be in the house of the Lord, lifting up hands and saying, my God is able. Yeah. Hallelujah. For somebody in this sanctuary today knows that there is no problem that God can't see you through. Never a worry nor never a care. Because God is always ahead of schedule, Sister Jackson, making ways out of no ways in the lives of believers. And all God wants you to do is just stand still and seek the salvation of the Lord. And guess what? We also got to learn how to sit and shut our mouths. Because oftentimes we talk ourselves out of a blessing. Because I may have something in mind for my sons, and they get in the car and indeed talk a whole lot of yin yang, and where I may have planned to stop because they are indeed having an ungrateful attitude, I'll just go ahead and take them home. They say, we'll try it the next time. Because daddy had something in mind for you. But you didn't show your gratitude and appreciation. And you didn't even trust me. Even when you couldn't trace me. Come on. <clears throat> oh, I tell you, my friends. If you don't get anything else from today's little message. That is something that God wants to personally step into each and every one of our spirits this afternoon. Wow. As we further proceed in 2024, in this new beginning, in this new chapter that God is importing us all to walk in hand in hand with him, Sister Parham. For I stop by here to simply let you know today, Metropolitan, that even if there are some obstacles standing in the way of what God has for you in the here and now, God says unto you today, Metropolitan, keep on being obedient to his voice. Yeah. Nevertheless, for I stop by here to let you know today on this third Sunday that God's omnipotence, he is an all-powerful God, is truly able to get us through whatever we are going through, seeing that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. For the Bible and Word of God says that morning by morning new mercies we see in all that we ever need. The Lord's hand has provided. Oh, I tell you, I feel like preaching now, Justice. Because as we begin to break down and explore today's text, who would have ever thought that a woman that was literally standing on her last leg Preparing what she thought was the last meal and supper for her and her boy. Yeah. 
With every being able to lift a prophet and a man of God up as he climbed higher in the things of God and fulfilled the will of God for his life. Because I want you to know today, Metropolitan, that the will of God will never lead you where the grace of God cannot be. For the text says, Justice, that this widow and woman who was all broke, busted, and disgusted turned around and blessed the prophet Elijah beyond belief with exactly what he was standing in the need of with the little that she had. Oh, I tell you, Metropolitan, it's amazing, Deacon Latif, how the Lord provides and how he is always right on time, exceeding our expectations. Yes, yeah, that's right. But the twist is, we got to obediently follow after him, mm -hmm. his will, his way, and his word. Because the Bible says that there is a way uh -huh. that seems right unto man, yes, but the end thereof is destruction, yes. chaos, yes. and confusion. That's right. And you will never prosper as a child of God when you are not linked up to the Lord and you do not trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path because third John chapter 2 says that it is my desire for you metropolitan that you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prosper because I want you to travel well and I want you to be all of God wants you to be yes. right. in him. Yes. But tell somebody and tell them what is impossible with man is surely possible with God. Sure. Yeah. When you find it, as you have been doing, Brother Sanders, for 98 years, wow. when you decide to walk by faith, and not by sight. That's right. For my Bible and your Bible says that all things are possible when you only believe yes. that God is at work in your life. For his word, saints of God, as I said earlier, will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. With every move you make and with every step that you take in him. But trust me when I tell you, God absolutely knows what he is up to in and through your life. For it is said that he will never ever put more on you than you can be. Whereas the saints of God used to say way back in the day, he is a burden bearer and a heavy load prayer. Because he knows exactly where your individual and corporate breaking point is. But the good news is that even though he knows where your breaking point is, he knows how to get you past it, he knows how to get you through it, and he knows how to get you behind it. Is there anybody in here today who the doctors have broke off and they saw something on the screen, but you got breath in your body and you know that God is the very air that you breathe? Well, if you're breathing, say to God, the Bible says, not Pastor Jones, that everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Is there anybody in this sanctuary today that got a war cry and you're going to shout for the lions when you want to shout for the Lord? Because God is the lifter of your head and the lover of your soul. And he wants you to know that when you don't know what to do, you got to be able to look to the hills for which come of your help and to let all of your help yeah. comes from the Lord. Oh, I tell you, I need you to enthusiastically declare that thing this afternoon with some spiritual boldness and authority, Metropolitan, as you spiritually get to stepping out on the ridiculous word that God has released and spoken over your life. For the prophet Elijah directly teaches us here in the 17th chapter that if God said that seventh. It does not matter whether you believe it or not, Sister Garrett. 
For God suddenly knows the steps we should take. Yeah. And when he gets through with us, we shall come forth as pure gold shining bright. Since obedience is surely better than sacrifice. For I am a living witness at 50 years old, John, that God surely specializes yeah. in giving strength, hope, and encouragement right when we need it the most. Okay. And all we got to do in return is just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord come to pass. Yes, For he's already vowed to give us the V-I-C-T-O-R-Y the victory and the fight all of our battles both from A to Z. For he wants us all to know without question and without doubt from now on that he has both the power and the authority to keep us in the midst of it all. Yes, sir. For he has given his angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. For church, when you lean on God, you will soon discover and learn thereafter for yourself that there is no lack in God whatsoever. Because the Bible, the word of God says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Oh yes, Deacon Latif, God got me preaching this particular message to you today as we open up this brand new year. Because he's ready to fine tune your faith and adjust your anointing in him right here and right now. Okay. So that you will be able to do even greater things in his name in 2024 yeah. and beyond. Because you must understand, beloved, that God specifically sent Elijah to Zarephath. Let the church say Zarephath. Zarephath. After he left the brook Kerith which was the cutting place in verses 1 through 7 because Zarephath was the refining place. Mm -hmm. Let the church say, Zarephath was the refining place. The refining place. was the refining place. The place where God was going to lay his hands on the prophet Elijah and supernaturally remove and take out of him everything that was not immediately reflective of him. For it was indeed here that God was going to sovereignly cleanse him, that God was going to perfect him, and God was going to hone and sharpen his spiritual intelligence and strength even more in him so that he could start having God-sized expectations from here on out. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, is that your word today? Has God been trying to stretch you oh, yeah. so that you can indeed know that he wants you to have God-sized expectations in him? For you do know, saints of God, that when you indeed elevate an individual's mind and stretch it, it will never go back to its original state. Because God wants you to know that it is his desire for all of us in here today that we have a Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 5 mind. And that is that God wants us to let this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. Well, if you indeed do know that, and you know that God has a call and a claim on your life, then you ought to keep on letting God divinely lay his hands on you as you roll with the flow and trust the process, not just part of the way, but all of the way with your whole heart. No matter how ridiculous the revelation that he releases in your life may seem and sound to you at first. For I am here to let you know today, church, it is indeed in those crazy, ill-conceived, and comical moments that God sovereignly sends us through that we learn even more about him, his ways, and his miraculous power. Because saints of God, God told me to come to the metropolitan. And I said, what? But I gotta be able to trust God. Yes. And now you can't even take me from this particular thing. Because I love the people and I love what God has commissioned for us to do. Because God lets 
says, no, take it to God. And you should never despise the day of small beginnings. Because when you get on the same page as God, and you have God-sized expectations, God will blow the roof off of this thing to God's sanctuary. And he will let us know that he will do something in and through your life that is exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ever ask or think according to the power that works within us. And do I have anybody in this sanctuary who wants to put their foot down and say, I'm ready to work and I'm ready to stir up the gift of God that God put in me before I was born in my mother's womb. Because I know he wants to do something in me. He wants to do something for me. And he wants to do something through me. Therefore, I got to let my light so shine before men so that they can see my good works. Yeah. And be glorified in the Father which is in heaven. Yeah. Where I discovered in my own Christian faith walk and journey with the Lord. Yeah. That he can suddenly bring about, let the church say, spiritual clarity. Spiritual clarity. Yes. In our lives. About who he is. When we personally go through a crisis of belief. Or should I say a hard time ourselves. That's why the saints of old used to say way back in the day that if I never had a problem, Come on. I wouldn't know that God could solve it. And I wouldn't know what faith in God would do. But through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. Yeah. And through it all, I learned to depend on God. Yeah. But through the storm, through the rain, through the sickness and the heartache and pain, I learned to depend on God even more. For he directly delivered me from danger seen and unseen. As I went out there and magnified his holy name on high. Simply for who he is and not for the things that he is able to do for me. As a matter of fact, am I talking to anybody in this building this afternoon? Who knows for themselves that God will do surely do some downright amazing things in and through your life. And that God will open up multiple avenues, streams, and ways to bless you beyond belief. If you just ask, seek, and knock. For the Bible says that if you ask, it shall be given. If you seek, ye shall find. And if you knock, the door will be open. For God surely specializes in overtaking us with uncommon, unusual, and outside-the-box blessings right when the person who has been inside and instructed to bless us think that they don't have nothing to give or offer at all. Let the church say as I heard Reverend Willis say, watch out. Because it's at those moments that you want to watch God move mightily and much in your life. Oh yes, I'm going to go ahead and keep it real with you, church. I was indeed frustrated at the times that God told me to trust him. As I was going through my trial, my tribulations, and my tests. But the good news is that God was faithful throughout. And nevertheless, and he never failed me nor forsook me for one second. But the spiritual truth in reality is, as Psalm 34 and verse number 19 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord is able to deliver us from them all. Therefore the meal, the flour, and the oil never subsequently ran out. If you simply seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and know that everything else should be added unto you. That's why my initial preaching point to you this afternoon is centered around the spiritual truth and reality that when you mathematically put God in the mix, when you mathematically put God in the equation, and when you mathematically put God in the middle of your mess, miracles will soon begin to happen suddenly and out of nowhere unexpectedly in your life. Amen. All because you intentionally moved in his direction and decided to magnify and to glorify his holy name on high, even though the miracle you needed to be made manifest at the time 
seem realistically impossible and a no-go in your eyesight. For you heard the man of God say in verse number 13, didn't you? I hope you got the Bible still open because, Donna, I don't want you to accuse me of making anything up. It says in verse number 13, Elijah said to the woman, don't worry. Go home and cook your food as you see. But first, make a small piece of bread from the flour that you have and bring it to me first. Then cook some for yourself and your son. In a real sense, all I'm trying to let you know right along here, Metropolitan is, if you just move with God and obey his mandate, no matter how ridiculous it may seem, you will start to see him subsequently moving mightily and much in your life as well. For it is said that faith honors God and God honors faith. And as a result of that fact, Metropolitan, I declare unto you today, saints of God, that God can take a biscuit and turn it into a breakthrough. God can take a kitty meal and turn it into a terror-made miracle and a blessing with your name on it. God can take some simple condiments and cause a wonderful change to transpire right before your very eyes. Yeah. By you just looking unto God, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, yeah. endured the cross, suffered the shame, and is now sitting at the right hand yeah. of the Father, yeah. making intercessions for us. Because God wants you to know that if you abide in him, and his word abides in you, you can go ahead, Joe, and ask anything in his name, and it shall be given. Yeah. Therefore, God's word for somebody in this century today is, don't you dare get caught up in what things look like in your life at this very moment and instance. Because God definitely knows how to reinterpret things and flip the script on yeah. situations when you lay your all on the altar and cast all of your cares upon him and come boldly to the throne of grace so that you can find help in your time of trouble. For is there anybody in here today, this afternoon, who is not ashamed to stand up and say with me that there's been plenty of times in my life, Pastor Jones, when I didn't have two sticks to rub together like this woman did. But God sovereignly took the script on my situation and he showed up and showed himself strong in my situation. And he subsequently did something special that caused the fire of the Holy Ghost to fall afresh on me. Because the Bible says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For he has given his angels charge over you when you keep you in all of your ways. But you got to forget about yourself. Concentrate on him and say, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. For there is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he can do the very same thing for you. Yes, oh yes. It's in there, church. Because God wants to teach us all this afternoon before we watch the lines. That your dedication to the direct will of God will always Definitely get you through your drought, your dry season, and whatever other dramatic episode yeah. that you may be facing at the time. That's right. Because nothing, and I do mean nothing, is over until God says it's over and done. Yeah. 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 And start half fire with your neighbor and tell them to keep on fighting until the victory is won. Yes, today is your day victory. for victory, saints of God. Tonight. So get on your way and let God continue to have his own way in and through your life. Because God knows the thoughts and the plans that he has towards you are good, Joe, and not evil. And he will take you to your expected end. And as a result of that spiritual truth in reality, church, Elijah wasn't being selfish at all. When he emphatically said what he said to the little old widow woman. 
Because I know that if I came to old sister girl right there and I would have told her, the man of God said, make me a plate. I don't want what you got on the table. She would indeed give me the sister girl fever and say like my mama told me, you get what you get and you don't catch a fever. <laughs> wow. But when the man of God tells you to do what you need to do, Elijah wasn't being selfish at all. When he emphatically said what he said to this little old broken down widow woman. Oh no. He was just boldly letting her know that when you have faith in God, little becomes much when you subsequently put it in the master's hand and leave it there. But look at somebody and tell them, child, I know for myself that when you're literally down to nothing, God is truly up to something big and major in your life. Man, when you truly walk with God, you'll never in all actuality know where your next blessing and breakthrough is going to derive from. That's why you got to stay locked in and tuned in to the will and the way of God. But there is a force of God victory. who can indeed bring victory in your life. Yes. Because he is an Ephesians 3 and 20 God. He is a God who can do things in and through your life which are exceedingly, abundantly above all that you can ever ask for thee. Yes. And beloved, that indeed spiritual truth and reality alone leads me to my next preaching point. Because I could have been through but God wants me to push this thing a little further. Because God told me to tell you through this teaching that through him, listen, 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 wake up and write it down. Personally, troublesome, our trials, our tests, and our tribulations, a turnaround and a testimony is bound to happen. Right. Did you hear what I said? If you call God on the scene of your situation yes. and you indeed allow him to troubleshoot the situation. Mm -hmm. He'll turn around what you're going through for your good and for his glory because God wants you to know that all these will work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Yeah. Therefore, as a child of God, you ought to count it as all joy when you go through any trials or tribulations of any kind. Yeah. Knowing that he who has begun a good work in us yeah. will complete it at the day of Jesus Christ. Because the truth of the matter is, we are all works in progress. Yeah. Yeah. No wonder the prophet Elijah said that the jar of flour will never be empty again. And the jug of oil will always have oil in it to that woman. Even though things look bleak for her at the time of her son. Amen. Church Elijah said all of that and then some to this woman who was broke, busted, and disgusted when the odds were stacked up high against her. Because like many of us, he believed God. He number two, he bet on God. Don't bet on the lions, but bet on God. Right. And number three, he banked on God all the way. For he has a name and a nature that will directly meet us at our every need. For he is the Lord who is strong and mighty. And he is the Lord who is mighty in battle. Oh, I'm through now, church, because I think that you spiritually understand that God will never, ever be found negligent when it comes to us. Because he promised us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And I know that you can be tailgating, but you can't even get the truth. Therefore, let me go ahead and take you to my clothes and take my seat. And give your pew partner a high five and say, God will take proper care of you when you do him in his man of God right and do the man of God a favor by going the extra mile. For he'll sovereignly turn around and cause you to triumph in a major way. But my last and final point to you today, Metropolitan, is as a child of God, when you hear me today, Match God's energy. Let the church say, match, match God's, God's energy. energy. And stop just going through the motions in your faith walk with God. 
you will surely start to see the mighty hand of God moving mightily and much in your life. Because saints of God, God wants you to know that out of the darkness and sadness can come happiness if you indeed focus in on the things of God. Yes. And God wanted this woman and this son to know that you should live and not die. Because when you follow the divine dictates of God, and when you are obedient to the voice of the Lord, the blessings of the Lord will overtake you in such a way that you'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come, and blessed when you go. Because God wants you to know, saints of God, with every move you make and with every step you take, God's got a blessing with your name on it. And he is saying, as you do the will of God, and you indeed forget about yourself and concentrate on him, God will say, that is my child over there, Sister Juanita Lofton. And indeed, just as I bless her grandmother, Sister Hale Bakers, I got a blessing with her name on it as well. Therefore, go ahead and sick her. Go ahead and bless her. Somebody in here knows that you don't have to wait until the battle is over. No, if you are in God, and God is in you, you can go ahead and shout right now. Therefore, let Lift up your bow down heads and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and let the King of glory come in. You ask me, who is the King of glory? The Lord who is mighty in battle, the Lord who is strong and mighty. God says, it ain't over until God says it's over. Somebody in here needs to give your neighbor a high five and tell him to keep fighting. Keep trusting and keep believing in the Lord because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has in store for you. And if you know that God has something in store for you, get in the proper position. Lift up your brow down here. Open up your heart and say, God, what you have for me. Hallelujah. I know it is for me. It ain't over. It ain't over. Until God says it's over. Keep fighting. Until the victory is won. As we all rest on our feet, the doors of the church are open. You may not have time to join today, but God says, get out your seat. Get on your feet. He's got a word for you as the choir sings this song. Stacked against you. Sing it, Whitney. When it seems there's no way out, I know the issue seems unchangeable. Yes. That there's no reason to shout, but the impossible yes. is God's chance to work a miracle. But you're a winner in 